In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the electron configuration for chlorine and also for potassium. And also in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a shortcut for coming up with electron configurations. I'm going to teach you how to use the periodic table to read an electron configuration rather than drawing out energy diagrams and box diagrams like we have been doing in previous videos. So in this video, again, I assume that you've already done some electron configuration stuff, that you're familiar with Pauli exclusion principle, the Aufbau principle, and Hund's rule that guides us through the, the filling of the orbitals, and that you know the difference between dia and paramagnetic. And for chlorine, let's just go ahead and get started. We have 17 electrons to put into the orbitals for chlorine, which means that we're going to need a few of them few orbitals. In the previous videos, we've used, we've needed to use the 1s and the 2s and the 2p orbitals, but we're probably going to need more than that. So in terms of like what comes next with the orbitals, let's just refer back in our notes um, to where I showed you the arrangement of the orbitals. Here it is the order in which they fill, and I'm still telling you, don't memorize this. This is the video where I'm going to start teaching you how to read this off the periodic table. But for the purposes of what we're drawing, let's take a look at what comes after 2p. We've got 3s and 3p and 4s. That's probably going to be enough. Let's just, just draw those three on our diagram. So we're going to go back and we're going to put in 3s and 3p and 4s. Now in this video I'm not going to use a box diagram. Uh, I've done that in previous videos and I've told you that whether you choose to use a box diagram or an energy diagram is totally your choice because they both represent the same thing. I'm not going to draw a box diagram in this video because a they're not my preferred style and b they, they take a lot of side to side um, space, horizontal space. I don't really have a lot of space for them. So I'm just going to stick with the energy diagram and we're just going to jump right in and start filling this up with 17 electrons. Remember we start at the bottom and work our way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15. Remember what I'm doing right here is Hun's rule where we're half filling every orbital before we double them up. I lost count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 electrons. So we didn't need the 4s after all. There's all of our electrons. And now let's go ahead and write the electron configuration. And remember to do that. We're just going to be reading off what we see in this energy diagram. So we're writing the name of the orbital first and then the number of electrons that are in that orbital. So for chlorine, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s has 2, and 3p has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's the electron configuration for chlorine. So remember I told you I was going to start teaching you um, in this video a shortcut of how to do this by just reading off the periodic table. And this is also going to introduce you to um, how to determine the order of the orbitals by using the periodic table. So what I'm going to try to do here, I'm not sure if this is going to work, I'm going to try to take this, see if I can copy this onto the periodic table just so that we have it as reference. That totally worked. All right, so this is just um, this is just sitting here for reference. That's the the electron configuration that we just came up with. And let's go ahead and find chlorine on this periodic table and just kind of highlight it so that we know where it's at and what we're working with. So on the periodic table, and um, we've talked before about how the atoms on the periodic table are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, increasing number of protons, which is also in order of increasing number of electrons. So the arrangement of the atoms on the periodic table is also a representation or a reflection of their electron configuration, the order in which the electrons are being filled um, in, the, in the different orbitals in the atom. And over here in this part of the periodic table, so these two columns right here, these two columns represent electrons that are being filled in the s orbitals. I wrote 1s, but really it's just the s orbitals. And this might not make sense until you actually see the example, and then it is going to make sense. So just kind of kind of bear with me on that. And I'm actually just going to color. I've got all these colors. So I'm going to color in my s orbital 
atoms, my s orbital spots. And this um, helium actually is part of the s orbitals as well, even though it's on the other side of the periodic table. And then over here on the right hand side, with exception of helium, so I'm going to try to exclude it, these are all the p orbital boxes. And let's make those a different color. So let's make these ones blue. So all of these are our p orbitals, like that. And in the middle, we haven't actually worked with any of these guys yet in terms of electron configurations. Let's get a different color, but all of these guys right here are d orbital atoms. Now you might be confused, you might be wondering like what exactly does she mean when she says these are the s orbital atoms and the p orbitals and the d orbitals. I'm going to show you in just a minute exactly what I mean, but right now I'm just trying to identify these different areas of space. That looks really, really bad. Okay, so here's our d orbital space. All of this right here. So when we're asked to write the electron configuration of a particular atom, like in this case with chlorine, what we're actually able to do is start at hydrogen and just start counting across the periodic table and count our way all the way up to chlorine. It is helpful, this particular periodic table doesn't have the, the, the rows numbered, but it is helpful to have those rows numbered because it, it helps us keep track of what's where. And so let me show you how this works. Again, we start at hydrogen and we just start counting our way over to our desired element, which is chlorine. And it goes like this, 1s1, 2. That's this right here. And then we move on, 2, 2s1, 2s2. We've got that right there. And now we move on to here. This is a continuation of row 2. 2p, because now we're in the p's, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's that. And now we continue, because we haven't made it to chlorine yet. We're going to keep doing this until we get to chlorine. So now we're here in the 3s, and we're also in the s's. 3s, 2. And now we keep going. Now we're in the p's, but we're still in the 3s. 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that is the electron configuration of chlorine. Now that, sometimes it takes a couple times of seeing how that works before it kind of sinks in. So without giving a further explanation, let's just move on to another example. So our next example is potassium. And potassium has 19 electrons. We're going to go back to what we know. So we're going to go back to our energy diagram first. And we have this energy diagram that we're going to put together in order, 2p, and then we have 3s, and then we have the 3p, and then after that we have the 4s. I think we're going to need all of them. And now we're going to fill in 19 electrons following Hund's rule. Start at the bottom, work your way up, half fill everything first. So we go 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And from this we can read from this the electron configuration, which is one S two, two S two, two P six, three S two, 3p6, 4s1. So let's, again, let's kind of do the same thing. Let's cut and paste this and take this back over. Actually, I didn't want to cut and paste it. I want to copy and paste it. Copy and paste this. Take this back over to this periodic table and see if we can replicate reading off of the periodic table. So this time we are looking for potassium. Potassium is right here, and it's in the fourth row. So let's see if we can count this. Starting at hydrogen, going from left to right, and working our way down to potassium. We go 1s12, so 1s2, 2s12, 
this is still a 2, 2p, two 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, 1, 2, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4s, 1, gives us this electron configuration. Again, you're going to need to practice it a few times, but once you get the hang of using the periodic table, to read the electron configuration, it is so much faster. In the next video, we're gonna jump straight to reading electron configurations off the periodic table without drawing any diagrams, so it'll give you even more practice.